Hey guys, welcome back to the channel. So today's video, I'm just gonna apologize. So first of all, let me back up. The weather has changed, fall is here, and we have disgusting weather outside here in Michigan. So we are back in the home office. So first of all, we're just not even gonna start this video with some pizzazz and some sex appeal of big machines on the job. You get me in my home office, and it gets even better because today's topic is how to read blueprints, which is riveting. So I'm just gonna fair warn you, uh, if you would like to follow along on the prints on your own computer check the link in the description you can download the blueprints I'm going to talk about in this video if you'd like to follow along this entire video is a screen capture of my computer with me going through them so you don't need to do that but the option is there for you also if you'd like to go through them on your own time the second thing I'm gonna say is pause the video right now walk into the refrigerator and go get yourself a beer because this one's gonna be a little painful to get through. This is not a sexy topic, this is a little boring, it drones on a little bit, I apologize, but the content is worth it, so I would encourage you to stick with it, there's some really valuable information here. So that being said, let's get into the prints, and I'll catch you on the back side of it. Okay, so the first print we're gonna look at is a fairly typical print for a new home construction. This is actually a basement that I dug about eight years ago. This home has been in existence now for about seven and a half years, and I not only dug the basement, but I also finish graded the lot and installed the sump all based off of this plan that we're looking at right now. So the first thing you're gonna look at when you look at any sort of a plot plan or road construction plan, whatever it is, you wanna make sure you're looking at the correct plan. So up here at the top, you can see this is for unit 53 in Knightsbridge Gate, which is the subdivision that we are working in. You can also come down here to this bottom corner and I'll zoom in just a little bit here. And you can see this is the client Hunter Pastor Homes. Uh, this is the lot layout and grading plan for lot 53. So this box right here is going to have all of the information about what particular plan you're looking at, as well as the lot that you're actually going to. So you always wanna verify that. So from there, what I would do if I were a dirt guy rolling up on this job, the first thing I'm gonna look at is I'm gonna look at my basement stakes. And those basement stakes should match the corners of this house. So you've got the main part of the house here, you've got an excavated porch, you have a garage, and we have the driveway. And so all of this is going to be staked out on your job site when you roll up. And the first thing you're gonna do is verify that those are staked correctly because more than one occasion, I showed up to a job site ready to dig a basement and it turns out the surveyors had staked the wrong floor plan. So you always wanna double check that. So once all of that's been verified, now we are really coming at this as some dirt guys trying to read a print. So just some real quick overview things because I know there will be questions. These lines right here with the kind of grayed out numbers, these are existing contour lines. And basically this is showing you roughly the contour of this property. And you'll see that we go down an elevation till about here and then we start going back up an elevation. And that makes total sense because there is a swale in the back of these houses that carries all of the rainwater away. This, if you were to compare to the the actual ground on the job site, you should be able to pick up on this swale just by looking at it and you can kind of orient yourself to the plan. Outside of that, just kind of an overview of the plan, you can see here's the street here, it's Maxwell Court. You have the sidewalks running along the side of the road here. Some other big features that are gonna stick out here is this kind of boxed area right here, which if we look is going to be listed and you're gonna have to zoom in a little bit and, and these prints will get a little confusing because there is so much information you just kind of have to dissect it in layers. And so what you're gonna see for this box is we have a 20 foot wide easement for sanitary sewer. And that's exactly what this box is for. And then if you look kind of in the middle here, you'll see a dashed line coming to this circle right here. This circle is actually a sanitary sewer structure. So this is gonna be a manhole that you can physically go stand on. And then this dashed line in the middle is your actual sanitary. So that's one of the big features you're gonna see. If we go up to the top here, you're also going to see in the back of the property another one of those dash squares and sure enough right along that dash line it tells us exactly what that's for it's a 25 foot wide easement for the storm sewer system and this dash line right here is going to be your storm sewer and we actually have a catch basin right here and if you look the sump from this house is dumping into that catch basin and that's labeled right here 
So I know we're drilling down a little quick, so let's kind of zoom out again and, and start at a higher level talking about as I approach the job, what I'm looking at. So once I've established that we're at the correct lot and we have the correct basement floor plan staked, one of the first things I'm going to do is figure out where my mud mat needs to be. And this is something that I know for a fact Michigan requires. I'm fairly confident this is a requirement in most states here in the U.S., but a, con a crushed concrete mud mat is something that is a requirement to keep debris off of the road. And the way we can figure this out is we see temporary stone mud mat right here, and it is pointing to this crosshatch section. If we drill into that a little bit, you're gonna notice that this is a 16 foot wide concrete drive. That's the solid lines is the actual drive. And so our mud mat needs to exist within this footprint. And this is where you're not gonna get super, super accurate uh, with something like a mud mat. But the way I would approach this is, I know where the property line is when I roll up. I have a measurement right here of 6.39 feet, which is just under six and a half feet. And then it looks like you've got another foot and a half or two foot over to the corner of this driveway. So what I would most likely do is pace off. I'm not gonna get super science exact, but I would pace off about 10-ish feet from the property line. Again, just estimating from this right here. And that's where I would start to peel the sod for my driveway. And I would make that roughly 14 foot wide just because we wanna keep it within the footprint of this 16 foot wide driveway. So once we've got the mud mat in, the next thing I'm concerned about as a dirt guy is where's my sanitary lead and where's my water lead? And that's actually represented here as well. If we kind of go over into this middle section of the yard, you're gonna see two lines going into the house. And sure enough, they are labeled right where they're supposed to be. This is a one inch water lead and this is a six inch sanitary lead. Now, these aren't going to run all the way into the house. Obviously, that's why we're here and that's why we're digging them in. Where you're gonna locate these, most of the time, if there isn't a two by four or a two by six sticking out of the ground, spray painted blue for water and generally green for sanitary, if you don't see those, they will generally be stubbed out somewhere within this easement in the middle of the yard. They're not typically going to be all the way into the property just because when it was installed, the company that was installing the utilities didn't have permission to go into the property. They have to stay within their easement. So again, if we didn't see our two by four sticking up out of the ground, I would generally set the machine up somewhere in this area so I could start digging over here for the water, over here for the sanitary sewer. If we kind of look, this was six and a half feet here. So this is probably 10-ish feet apart. So on this particular lot, and I can tell you for a fact because I did dig this one, but just looking at the print, I would dig these in one hole and combine the two trenches just because they are close enough together that it doesn't make sense to dig them separately. So we would go in and we would dig and we would find these leads. It's important to know that this is a six inch sanitary lead because you're gonna need to bring a rubber boot that's going to reduce your four inch, or I should say reduce the six inch pipe down to your four inch pipe that your sanitary lead is going to be coming out of the house. So that's gonna be important to know. And then it is important to know that you have a one inch water line because you need to have the correct fittings and the correct water line size. So once we've got these located, and we have an elevation which we will pull using our grade rod. Once we have those, the next step becomes how do we get those into the basement? And in order to do that, we need to know how deep we need to dig our basement hole and what elevation our basement is gonna be sitting at. And we find that information up here. So what you're gonna see is you're gonna see some details about the house. There's gonna be a couple different grades here that don't really apply to what we're doing. The one we're concerned with is this one, which is the top of footing. Top of footing is 950.17. And just to back up really quick, all of the elevations on these plans are not going to be relative values based off of some benchmark on the site. These will all be absolute values and they are feet above sea level. So this is 950.17 feet above sea level. When we go to our contour lines, this is 956 feet above sea level. So we don't have to reference a benchmark somewhere to know what the elevation of these things is. That's why they do that in prints. It takes any confusion out of it. You know exactly what the height of that's supposed to be. So going back to our number here, we need our top of footing to be 950.17. I know for a fact that here in Michigan, we pour 10 inch footings. So we need to subtract 10 inches off of this number. But 
This is where you get into a little trickery. I'm going to put a link up on one of the cards here so that you can go to my video if you need help converting from tenths to inches. But we're going to actually convert 10 inches over to tenths and then we're going to subtract it off this number. So 950.17 is what our top of footing is. We need to convert 10 inches to tenths. We're going to do that by dividing 10 inches by our 12 inches that are in a foot and that gives us 0.83. So if we subtract 0.83 from this number, it's going to give us a value of 949.34 feet. So right here, in fact, we can do that really fast. And I'm actually going to highlight that just so it sticks out. So now we have our footing height figured out. This is the elevation that we need to set our footing from. So again, as a dirt guy, now that I have these numbers, what do I do with them? Well, we need to actually have a benchmark elevation so that we can use our grade rod to actually set this elevation. Generally, when you pull up on a site, you're gonna have a stake somewhere on the front of the property line up here. It's gonna be a benchmark stake. It will very clearly say benchmark on it. It will have a hub right next to it that is set to the elevation that is designated on the stake. Now, one of the reasons I'm glad that I saved this particular print is if we zoom out here and I scroll down, we're gonna notice this block of text right here. This is not by any means on every print, but it is one of the important reasons that you should take a second to kind of really familiarize yourself with the print is because you will get little nuggets like this. If we look right here, it says there's a site benchmark, it's a sanitary manhole rim, and it gives us a US Geological Survey height of 957.89. So if for whatever reason, when we were pulling up on this lot, we accidentally ran over our benchmark stake or one of the carpenters actually took it out or for whatever reason, our benchmark is not existing, we can actually take an elevation off of this and we can say confidently, we're not guessing because you'll see top of curb right here is a, is a perfect example. If we scroll in right here, the top of curb at this point right here is 955.96, but that's also subject to the curbing company getting that curb accurately where it needed to be there could be some fluctuation they don't have the exact heights and elevations that a surveyor does but when we have a USGS datum point we know that this point is 957.89 so we can go pull a benchmark off of this and use it to set our basement height so that is one thing I did want to point out on this particular print that's a really important piece of information so going back to our scenario of digging our basement once we go and zero zero in either on our benchmark stake here on site or if we go get our elevation off of this benchmark down here once we have that we can then subtract those numbers from this number here and it will give us the point at which we need to set on our grade rod for our finished basement elevation so once we have that information we can go back to where we've dug in our sanitary and our water and figure out how much rise we need to come up to stay about a foot and a half below the basement, below our dig line, we wanna stay below that, and then we will bring the sanitary and the water into the house at that elevation. So this is a typical house print. This is what I'm looking at as a dirt guy when I roll up on a job. As messy as, a, as all of this is, all I'm really concerned about is where my benchmark is. If we have an extra benchmark like here, I'm concerned about where my water and sanitary leads are, where my driveway is going in, and of course, we need to know the elevation for our footing and top of footing so that we can dig the hole at the correct elevation. So this one's pretty straightforward. One thing I will tell you, if you do finish grading on residential lots, and it is something that the city checks, you will use a couple extra points. I'm gonna zoom in just a hair more, and we're gonna look down the side of the property line here. So you're gonna see these hard black X's here. There's one here, there's one here, and there's actually one at the front. And each one of those is accompanied by an elevation. Let me zoom in a little closer so you can see really well. This hard black X here has an elevation of 956.50. If we scoot up a little further here, you're gonna see this hard X right here is 957.5. This hard X here, 957.03. These are actual finished grade elevations that were set by the engineering firm back when they planned out the subdivision. And I know for a fact in this subdivision, when they came to check off on 
the finished grade for the house, you had to meet these points along the property line. And you'll see we've got those points running down this side of the property line as well. Those are points that are hard and fast. You will need to hit them with a reasonable degree of accuracy. I'm not talking within five or six inches. I'm talking you have to be within about a tenth, if I recall right, for them to pass the lot. So that is one other piece of information on a residential plot that you might want to know. So if you have any questions on this one, absolutely drop it in the comments. Uh, otherwise, we're going to move on to a commercial print. Okay, now that we've covered residential prints, I want to start dipping our toe in the water of commercial prints. And this one's not too terrible. It's only about nine pages long. And you'll see very quickly that nine pages sounds scary. Each, each page has its own place and its own details of what it's covering. But in the grand scheme of things, for a commercial print even, this isn't that intimidating. When you get onto highway projects or airport projects, you get into projects where you have a book, a literal book that the foreman carries around with the blueprint for the entire job. And again, that sounds really intimidating, but when you start going through it, you see that each page pertains to a specific section of the job or specific elements of that section. For instance, you've got drainage plans, you've got topography plans, you've got, you've got various aspects that are all being covered in those plans. Don't let the thickness of a set of prints intimidate you. Just kind of like everything else, take it at a bite size level and it's really straightforward. So that being said, let's kind of start looking at this particular plan. Plan here. Just like on the residential side, one of the first things you're going to do is verify you have the right print. So we want to make sure that we are at the Benstein Grill and we want to make sure that the site that we're at actually matches where we are in the universe here. And then the nice piece of information that we're going to be referencing all the time on these prints, I'm going to zoom in just a little bit, is this corner right here. And that's going to tell us not only what the print is for, but specifically what this page is for. And just, you know, like I said, this is telling us we're looking at the cover sheet. And sure enough, this is the cover sheet. And you can see an index of the drawings. We're going to go to the cover sheet. Then we're going to go through the topographic survey, preliminary site plan, Plan, preliminary grading plans, utility plan, drainage plan, notes and details. So you can already see that while there are nine pages here, it's all just taking everything in bite-sized pieces and breaking it down for us. So without further ado, let's move on to the next page and we'll get into this. So the first thing we're going to look at here, this is our topographic survey. This is the initial survey that the surveyors go out and do. And we're kind of similar to the residential print. One of the things you're going to notice offhand is there's a ton of information here and it's all crammed together. But if you kind of separate it by the thickness of the lines and how dark the lines are, a lot of this information is actually in the background. You're going to see these little points here. You're going to see our contour lines. And all that is is existing data points that reference the topography of the area that we're about to work in. So we're going to scroll over here. You're going to see this is the proposed expansion parcel. So if I go back over here, this is the existing lot and this is as it existed before we went in and started this project which by the way if you are curious at all to see this project it actually happened on my channel I did record the process and you are more than welcome to go back it is uh, I don't even remember what I titled the videos but I will shoot a link up at the top here of this video so if you do want to go explore those you can but this is the existing parking lot it ended right here this was a curb line you've got your dumpster enclosure here and that that was it. They didn't have any parking hardly. And so this was the expansion lot that they purchased and decided to expand their parking area with. And that is designated right here as the expansion parcel. It did have an existing walk path, which you can see here, and that is asphalt as designated on the plans. But that path ended up being moved and we will see that on our future pages here in the print. So this is the initial topography of the site and that's all this first page is. Okay so the next page we're going to is the preliminary site plan and this is basically going to break down what are they wanting to do with this site. So instead of just giving you topographic lines and some contours what are we actually putting on the site. I do want to make a quick note here don't worry about these colored areas. This was my friend that gave me these prints. This was something he was using to calculate some square footage for uh, material costs and everything. So don't get hung up on the colors, those won't be there. What we're focused on is right here. So if you remember, this is roughly where the parking lot ended existing. This is all the expansion that's going to happen and you'll see it gets cut off. If I go down one more page in these prints, this is the expansion parcel. And you'll see this dashed line here 
If we go back up, you'll see the same dashed line here, and they tell you flat out, if you put those two side by side, you're gonna match the dashed lines, and that will give you a clean image of the entire site. And so you can see what we've done is the dumpster pad that used to be over here is moving over here. We've put in a couple islands, and then we've opened up this whole parcel, which we'll scroll to our next page. This whole parcel has now become more parking, and you'll notice that walking path has been bumped over and then ties back into the existing here and here. So this is kind of an overview of what they wanna do with a site. And I will hover on this page just for a second if you wanna pause the video, because prints are kind of one of those onion type situations where at first glance you're like, oh, okay, I can kinda of see what they're doing with the site. But then when you start drilling down into them, you're gonna notice things like, oh, okay, so it tells us specifically what we're gonna do with the asphalt walking path. It talks about arrows, it talks about existing stripes uh, or I'm sorry, not existing, but what the striping is going to be. So you're going to notice more and more information the longer you look at these prints. There's a ton of information on these prints. I've had it on this page for a minute, so we're going to keep going, but feel free to not only sit on this and pause the video, but also I'm going to put a download link in the description for these plans. Feel free to download those and take a really good look at them, drill down into them. And if you have any questions, obviously don't hesitate to shoot a comment or shoot me a message and I'll do what I can to get it answered for you. So so zooming out and we're going to scroll down another page. Now we get into the preliminary grading plan. So this is where, you know, me as a dirt guy, this is where I'm really starting to get interested because the initial page is there. Okay. We've got some topography. Don't really care about, okay. The overall site plan. Yeah. That gives me an idea of what we're doing, but now we're getting into the nitty gritty of what do I need to do to grade this thing? And all of our grading is primarily taking place back in here because this is where we are, you know, our curb line was roughly oh right about here so this is all getting graded and you'll see we've got this is where they saw cut and it, that's not I know that because I was actually physically on the job it doesn't say that in the prints but this is a saw cut and so we're gonna notice that we have these hard elevation points that the engineers want to see and we need to match those specifically but something else I want you to notice is these points here that say match and then it gives you an elevation and it says plus or minus. Really quick sidebar, you're gonna notice our elevations are only two digits and one decimal. The reason they did that is because if you kind of look into the background here, all of these points are in the 900 foot elevation range. So all the firm has done, the engineering firm has done here is cleaned up the print a little bit by dropping the 900s off of their elevations. So this elevation that's being referenced here is 928.5. They just dropped the nine off of it because it's understood that everything here is in the 900s. So all that being said, let's go back to this match 28.5 plus or minus. The reason they put that here is this is an existing asphalt lot. It would make no sense to hit a hard elevation at this point that would require us peeling up this entire section of asphalt in order to make it a hard match. Instead, what the engineering firm has said is, hey, all of this is new. You guys need to hit these elevations accurately, but then you need to blend into existing. And this just needs to match so that it makes sense. You know, it doesn't need to be a, a 45 degree pitch down. It just needs to be a nice clean match to the existing pavement. So that is one thing I wanted to point out there. So this is the first page of our preliminary grading plan. And then if we go down another page, you're gonna see the back half of the lot here. Same thing, they actually have a ridge uh, designated for us here in the middle of the parking lot. And then you're gonna notice these little arrows here. These are actually slope lines that are showing you which way the water should flow. And one of the things you'll see is you actually have grade percentages here. So this should be a 1% grade falling back this way. This should be a 1.5% grade falling this way. 1.05 falling back this way. So this is all of the information that the dirt guys are going to need in order to grade this lot. You're going to have your hard points that you need to hit out here on the edges. You're going to have slopes that you're going to need to carry and flows that you need to carry to get the water where it needs to go. Now I have the information that I need to go out and grade this site. So moving down another page, we get into the preliminary utility plan. The one thing that really is, is what I'm interested in here is, and this is going to be on the next print as well, but it's going to start getting into our storm sewer system and that's designated right here. And so I'm not going to get too deep into it on this page because we actually have a, a storm drain plan on our next page. Okay, so we've stepped down another page. This is where we start getting into the nitty gritty 
of our drainage plan. So one of the things I do want to talk about on commercial prints, you get into a lot more symbols. And I'll give you an example of these guys right here, these little squares. At first glance, uh, a lot of people are probably, what is that? That is where your legend comes into handy. Sorry, this is my first time doing a screen recording. You're going to have to bear with me. So what are those squares? That is found in your legend right here. And I would highly advise you to take a good look at your legend when you pull open a plan. That wasn't as important on the residential plan because it was really straightforward. But you can see on this plan, there is a lot of stuff that is being designated on these plans. And so we need to be able to work through that and figure out what these symbols are. So going back over here, you can see it in the corner. What is the little square? That's right there. It is a square catch basin. And you're gonna notice we have on this side existing structures and things. On this side, we have proposed, and you can see that up here, proposed things. And that's going to come into play with this symbol right here. Let's go find that on our print. Let me scroll down here. So the plan was we tied into this structure and you can see that's an existing square catch basin. And then it runs over to that symbol that we just saw, which is a proposed catch basin. So we have one, two proposed catch basins that we have to install. And then we have storm pipe running between those two. And right here, you're going to see not only a breakdown of the length of the pipe, but it's going to tell you what kind of pipe, what size of pipe, and it's going to give you the grade of the pipe. This is only a 0.12% run. If you've watched any of my videos on us actually installing this project, I actually talk about this. This was a really unique storm sewer setup. Uh, it was essentially a glorified drain field. So there is a reason it didn't have any run to it. It was not intended to shed water. It was basically intended to hold water while it drained into the ground. So this is where we get into the breakdown of our storm system. And now another piece of information that this has is this guy right up here that we're going to zoom in on. And that is a breakdown of the storm system. It's one thing to just put pipe in a hole, but this actually tells us the way we need to engineer this system. And you're gonna see that we start out here, we dig our trench, at the bottom of our trench to the top of our stone, we need about 35 and a half inches. And so we're gonna have our native soil, which is designated right here. Then we're gonna bed it with six inches of three inch to six inch crushed stone, which was ridiculous. Um, I've never bedded a pipe with stone like this before, but again, this was a really unique storm sewer system. So we're gonna bed it with our three to six inch stone. We're gonna put our pipe in the hole and then we're gonna backfill with half inch to two inch stone. Once we do that and get it to the level of the pipe, we're gonna throw down our non-woven geotextile fabric, which we all know is just geogrid or fabric or however you wanna call it. And then we're going to backfill the rest of the way with sand and compact it. This tells us this is our 24 inch ADS N12 perforated pipe. Everything that you need to install this is right here. So it breaks down what that trench needs to look at from a cross section. This also has flow rates that are gonna go through that pipe and how it was calculated and everything. As a dirt guy, we're never gonna get into that, but it's, it's there. I mean, again, all the information you need is there. So I did miss something. So I had to jump back a page. This is actually found on the preliminary utility plan, but this actually breaks down our catch basins as well. And so it tells you this is a four foot diameter, two inch deep sump. Um, it's got a great uh, M1 grate. It's T1 black rim. I mean, it tells you everything you need to know. It gives you the coordinates of where it needs to be located. It gives you a rim height. I mean, everything you need to tie into your existing structure and install your two new structures is all here. Next page, everything you need to install the storm pipe and bed it in properly is right here. So finally, the last page, this is where you're gonna get into just really technical aspects of everything. I mean, I don't know how else to put it. We're getting into the different asphalt strengths and what mixes you need to use and what bedding material you need to have for your subgrade and your base and uh, how how the signs need to be actually installed in the ground and and how they should be filled with concrete and everything is laid out in these plans and so i'm not going to get into the technical aspects of all of this this has been a long enough video but what i will do like i said i will put a a link in the description to download these plans feel free to go through these on your computer and really dive into them and kind of get into the more intimate details of these prints. And as always, if you have any questions on this stuff, feel free to shoot me a comment. Feel free to drop me a message. I've got no problem helping you out with this.
Was it too painful? I'm hoping not. I'm hoping the fact that you're actually watching this portion of the video tells me that you at least made it through. So I do want to apologize. I had to make you sit through that. I would like to give you a very small princess clap that you did make it this far. Um, so yeah, thanks for sticking it out. In all honesty, this was not uh, the, the funnest video to make. I know it was not the most fun video to watch, but the content needed to be put out there. There's, uh, there's just not a whole lot when it comes to really reading Prince as a dirt guy. And I did want to make this video. So again, I appreciate you guys sticking it out. I hope it wasn't too unbearable for you. Like I've said already a couple times, I don't know how many because I'm not keeping track, but again, check the description below. I do have a link to download those blueprints so you can go through them at your speed, at your pace, and uh, and try to glean a little more information. And as always, if you have any questions on any of this stuff, absolutely drop a comment down below. And if I don't know the answer, I will. I am not above calling an engineering firm and getting an answer for you. So let me know what your questions are and we'll see you on the next video guys.